This is going to be an easy way to process your photos in Photoshop. Um, we'll start with a stacked photo from Ron Conger. The reason I chose this, uh, he included all the calibration frames, makes things a whole lot easier on you. So don't forget your darks, your bias, and your uh, flat frames, especially your flat frames. So here we go. Now, when um, these come out of uh, um, stacking, they'll be a 32-bit file. So the first thing you need to do is change it. And to do that, you go up to Image, Mode, and you can see right now it's in 32 bits per channel. We'll want to change that to 16 bits per channel. Reason being is Photoshop just doesn't handle 32-bit that well. So you get this dialog box and the method that is default is local adaptation. Don't use that. Change it to exposure and gamma. And OK. So now we are 16 bits per channel. <coughs> and um, ready to get started. Now the first thing you want to do is color balance your image. And if you look over here, make sure you've got your histogram showing. Uh, I think the default behavior for this is RGB and make sure you have the all channels view selected here as opposed to the compact view okay so let's go back to all channels and colors now you can see that your colors are not aligned here so the first thing we need to do is get this thing color balanced and to do that you select a levels layer and work with each channel individually. So we'll start with the red channel. And what we need to do is drag this over to the left side. Okay, so we'll want to drag it over to the left and leave yourself a little bit of space to the left there so that you're not clipping the blacks. Okay, and um, as you do these, you'll want to reset your histogram, and you can see what that did for you. Okay, and again, um, drag this slider over and try to get the green channel sitting right on top of the red channel. Reset your histogram again. And you can see I didn't go quite far enough, so let's go just a little bit farther. Reset that again. Okay, that's pretty close. You can see it's yellow, and that's what you should get when you combine those two channels. Now let's go ahead and do the blue channel. All right, we're dragging the blue channel over. Let's refresh that and see what we got. Yeah, that's fairly close for this first move. We're going to go ahead and accept that. Um, there we go. Close that out. Now the next thing that we need to do is stretch. So we'll get a curves layer. Reset the histogram here. And I'm going to use these presets. Arc sign 10. Okay, that did a good stretch there. Now you'll notice, let's refresh this again. You'll notice that the uh, everything is moved over and the colors are not really balanced that well. So let's go ahead and first, and this is fairly important, flatten this image. Now, 
before you click on the flatten image, look at your image and then click flatten image. Okay, you'll notice a slight change. And then the other thing that you can see once we've increased the intensity levels here is we do need to do a slight crop because when things were stacked, um, slight out of alignment uh, causes some overlapping. So we'll go ahead and crop that out. You can see it around the edges here, this black ring. Now, part of this is the drop shadow in the display, but there is definitely a little bit of overlap there. Um, let's control Z that. I didn't mean to do that. So again, um, let's go to your crop tool. keeping the aspect ratio the same. Okay. Go ahead and accept that crop. And you'll see it got rid of all that uh, stacking artifacts around the edges there. Okay. So we're good now. And we have already flattened our image. So let's do another levels layer. And again, we're not quite lined up here. So let's go ahead and do individual channels again. Red. And let's drag this back over to the left. Leaving a little bit of room on the side. Grab the green channel. Let's do the same. Try to get it as close as you can. Refresh that histogram again. And there you go. We've got a little bit of extra red hanging out, but there's a little extra red in the um, image, so that's fine. Blue. Let's drag it on over. And refresh that histogram again. And you can see everything's kind of gray now. They're fairly well lined up. We're going to go ahead and take that. And now we'll want to do another curves layer. As you can see, we're starting to get somewhere. So let's go ahead and do another arc sign 10. Looking good. Close that, refresh the histogram again, and you can see things are starting to get broadened out a little bit. Very good. Flatten the image. I think we've got room for one more stretch here. So let's go ahead and drag our levels back to black. Um, Slight out of alignment up there. Let's go ahead and do it individually this time again. Uh, I'll take our red back over. All right. Now we'll take our green back over. Watching your histogram up there. Try to get it yellow. Okay. And you can see we got a little overlap of the blue, and that's where that gray's coming in at. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and bring our blue in line. There you go. Now we're fairly gray. Okay. And you can see we're starting to clip a little blacks here, but for the purpose of this demonstration here, we're not going to worry too much about that. Let's go ahead and close that out and try for one more stretch with the curves. Arc sign stretch, 10. Very good. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna like that. Let's go ahead and say yes. Refresh that histogram again. Okay. And again, we're clipping a little bit of blacks, but we're not going to get too overly worked up about that right now. Now, let's go ahead and flatten that image again. 
If you look over here, you can see, uh, and this actually is supposed to be here, this red nebulosity, but for this step, we're going to take all of this gradient all around the edge, all in here, and try to remove that. So what we'll need to do is duplicate the background layer twice. Let's go hold the control key and tap the J key twice. <coughs> now what, <coughs> what that's done is um, made two duplicate layers and we're going to subtract all this mess from this top layer. Now the way we do that is control plus A to select everything, then hold the control key and hit C to copy. Okay, so that's copied this image and now we'll make a new image. Go to File, New, and select the one that says Clipboard because that is going to give you the same dimensions as you've just copied. So you select that and it's empty right now but that's okay we just control V to paste and that paste the clipboard into the image. You can get rid of the background image, right click on that, delete the layer, and uh, we're still in crop mode here so let's just go back to the zoom function and filter. Select filter, select noise, dust and scratches. And somewhere up around 100%, uh, depending on how busy the image is, uh, you might even go just a little bit higher. But that looks pretty good as far as what the dust and scratches should look like. And you can see it's going to take this bright area out and this darker area with the fuzz in there. Okay, we'll go ahead and apply that. Now when you're looking at this image, you're going to see that the nebula is still there and we don't want to subtract the nebula and we don't want to subtract these bright star areas here like here and here and here. So what we'll do is we'll grab our lasso tool and just roughly nothing fancy here just trace around the outside edge and go to edit fill and make sure in this box that content aware is selected and color adaptation is checked, mode normal, opacity 100. Okay. Now Photoshop will think about it for a minute and apply that uh, calculation to remove this from the inside. And there you go. Okay, go ahead and deselect that hold the control key and hit D and I, I think I'll use the um, spot healing brush to uh, I'm set at about 600 right now um, as far as the diameter of the brush make sure that the brush is zero percent hardness okay and in this case 600 uh, pixels is about right so um, let's go ahead and click and just kind of rub over that spot And that kind of softens everything up. And that looks pretty good. Now, as bad as this looks already, let's see if we can make it look a little bit worse. 
go to blur, Gaussian blur, and somewhere between 100 and 200. Um, let's go ahead and try to blur that out just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty close. Everything is just nice and blurry. Click OK. All right. Now that's what we're going to subtract from the other image we were working on. So let's go back to our image and go ahead and deselect that. Control D. And then under Image, we'll click Apply Image. Okay, now the default behavior is the uh, image that you're working in as the source and multiply as the blend mode. That's not what we want to do here. What we want to do is subtract that blurry mess that we just made and change the blend mode to subtract as opposed to multiply. Subtract and the controls that we have here are the offset, and I'll just show you basically what that does. If we made an offset of zero, it's going to apply the entire thing, and it's going to take every single thing out, and that's not really what you want to do. What you want to do is an offset of the higher you go. Let's, let's just go ahead and go re real high, like 80. Okay, now that's um, not good. Okay, what we really want to do here is strike a balance, and that is going to be, in this case, somewhere around 30. Okay, and that actually looks pretty good. You don't want to go too dark here. You don't want to go too light here. You want it to be something along the lines of what I've got here. So, in this case, 30 is good. Um, don't try to get it too dark at this stage. So again, the settings here were the blurry image, which is the untitled image right here. And that's the source that we're going to subtract from this. So blend mode is subtract. Scale is 1 because scale of 2, which is as high as it's going to let you go, is between 1 and 2, uh, is not where we want to be either. So in this case, blend mode of one is good. You can, once you get comfortable with this, you can play with that a little bit on your own. But um, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and keep it at a scale of one and an offset of 30. Go ahead and say OK to accept those changes. And if you like what you've got, uh, let's go ahead and flatten the image again. We will flatten this image, so flatten, and okay, that looks pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom to full frame, which is control plus zero. Okay, now what we need to do is uh, some adjustments in the camera raw filter. So you go up to filter. camera raw. And the first thing you want to do here is uh, click your zoom and see all this color modeling in the background that's color noise basically. You need to go down to detail. Uh, and, and these controls that are in here are almost identical to what you have in Lightroom. So they're just laid out a little bit different, but this idea is the same and the controls are all the same. So in the detail, you'll want to go to your color noise and pick uh, something around 25. And you'll see that got rid of all that noise in the background. Now, what you don't want to do in here is go hog wild with your noise reduction. Because here's, let me show you what happens. If you go all the way up to 100%, well, that really softened up the background nice, but when you zoom back out again, it robbed you of all your detail in here. So 
in this case just for regular noise reduction we'll probably go somewhere around I don't know 10 15 somewhere in there and that'll that'll help your background out a little bit there's zero and there's just a eh, about 15 okay that's good 15 looks good and <clears throat> another thing we can do in here is uh, this basic tab is a global adjustment. So everything that you do in here is going to affect everything that's in the image. So we'll want to probably isolate the nebula first and do a little bit of extra work in there. So we'll use a radial filter, which is over here. And you just draw that out. You can see, change it any way you want. And we'll get about kind of like an oval here. And you can rotate it here. If you drag your cursor to the outside, you can see that little bent arrow. And that'll allow you to rotate it. And drag this down. Rotate it again to kind of get everything lined up. And then click on the mask options. Um, make sure you're not inverted too. Um, click on the mask options and go ahead and uh, if you're set up the way I'm set up, I, I keep my corrections from the last time I used it. So that resets your all your connections or all your corrections. So you just click on that. Make sure you reset. That'll zero all your levers here. So let's go ahead and increase the saturation. Let's probably go uh, right around 65%. You can get away with 65% in this uh, um, radial filter. You, you wouldn't want to do that in the global settings, but you're, you're fine here. So you might want to bump up the exposure just a touch and maybe increase your contrast just a little and knock your highlights back down. Okay, now that looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and go back into the regular editing. And here, what we can do is increase our exposure to kind of give us a little bit of those dark clouds, that brown dust that's around there. Um, the image looks a little flat now, so you'll want to bump up some contrast. And you can do that by increasing your darks a little, or your blacks, I'm sorry. Um, your black levels and that increased our contrast pretty well and if you want to you could try to knock those highlights back down just a little bit again that'll give you a little bit more definition in there and kind of help with that blown out core and, and like I said before if you're taking a picture of M42 and you're only using one single set of exposures to get everything in there that core is going to get blown out. There's not much you can do about that uh, other than take another set of images with a, a lot lower setting and then just blend that core in. But uh, this is what we're working with right now. So um, I think everything probably looks pretty good. Uh, we might increase the vibrance just a little while we're in this filter. And again, we're in the global settings, so don't do that <laughs> but uh, you know nine or ten somewhere in there you can see it kind of made things pop a little bit in here um, and basically you could call this done I think it'll apply these changes out here and really there's not a whole lot else you would need to do um, you know, once you get comfortable with Photoshop, there's quite a few things you could do with uh, layer masks and all those kinds of things. But at this point in time, you could just go ahead and, and something you don't want to do here. Uh, like right now, I was working on the auto save Ron underscore two, and that's the TIFF file. 
don't save here let me let me show you what I'm talking about actually you know what now we're gonna go ahead and call this one done for now but you know once you get used to Photoshop you can uh, isolate a few things out here um, let's go ahead and just save this under file save as now you don't want to save it as exactly the same file that you opened so you might want to throw another underscore under there and then just do a PS for Photoshop so you know what you did there and then go ahead and save that off um, you've already flattened the images so you don't have a, a whole lot of uh, layers which will increase your file size I usually don't zip it I just do no compression and keep all these settings as they are and go ahead and say okay it'll do the save and you're done hope that was helpful see ya